In today's video, we're going to take this little computer and turn it into a router and a little home server, all in this little tiny box. That's pretty cool. Stick around. If you've been around the single board computer, IoT, or mini computer space for a bit, you've probably seen this board, as it's definitely not new. The Odyssey from Seed Studio is an impressive little single board computer featuring an Intel J4125 quad core CPU clocked at 2GHz. It comes with 8GB of LPDDR4 memory, as well as a vast array of other features and I.O., including dual gigabit NICs, onboard Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, two M.2 slots, a SATA port, a USB-C 3.1 port, HDMI, and more. Oh, and did I mention that it has Raspberry Pi compatible GPIO, as well as an integrated ARM coprocessor and headers for using Arduino. The version I have here came with a 128GB M.2 SATA SSD and Seed Studios RE or RE computer case, which is a pretty cool little aluminum case that has an acrylic top cover. Haha. -ha. This little board is quite a workhorse and can really do so, so many things, which in a way is the best and worst thing about this PC, but more on that later. The Odyssey comes pre-installed with Windows 10 and is marketed as a mini PC option, so I tested out Windows just a little bit and it performed pretty well for basic tasks and handled 1080p 60 YouTube playback with only a few dropped frames here and there. In Cinebench R15, it scored a three run average of 166, which to be fair is pretty low. But if we compare that result to some of the other low powered CPUs we've looked at before on the channel, it's actually quite impressive. For example, if we look at the A6 5200 or Intel J2900, we see that the Odyssey with its J4125 manages to outperform both in Cinebench R15 while only consuming about 16 and a half watts of power. That's only slightly more than the other two systems consumed while at idle. Now, obviously the J4125 is much newer and more expensive, but it's clear that the CPU is really quite good if you're looking for something with decent performance and great efficiency. Now, obviously this video isn't about running Windows. We're going to be setting up this Odyssey as a router using PFSense and more specifically running PFSense in a virtual machine. If you haven't heard of PFSense before, you might be wondering exactly what it is and why we would want to use something running PFSense instead of just using an off-the-shelf router or the one provided by your internet service provider. PFSense is an open source firewall and router that can be entirely managed by a web UI and packs tons of features that are often only seen in expensive enterprise gear. PFSense can run on just about anything from old retired desktops to dedicated low power ARM devices, but not Raspberry Pis, so don't leave me a comment about that. Installing PFSense on the Odyssey is incredibly simple, and Seed Studio even provides a guide on how to do it. And while this does work great, I feel like it's, well, it's sort of lame. You see, the Odyssey runs PFSense really well, but also costs $270, and only has two gigabit ports, which does limit some of the things you can do with PFSense and your home network. You could spend well under $100 on a used small form factor office PC, drop in an Ethernet PCIe card, and have a much more powerful router. Or if power efficiency is important to you, you could buy a dedicated NetGate device, which even includes a third Ethernet interface. These are ARM-based devices and consume very little power. However, they do use a proprietary version of PFSense called PFSense Plus. Still, this comes in at just around two thirds the cost of the Odyssey. There are also some other Intel-based mini PCs on the market that feature dual gigabit NICs, albeit with less I.O. and lower specs. So with all this information, just running PFSense on the Odyssey seems inefficient. We're paying for $270 worth of hardware, but not really taking advantage of it. Now, what if we could run PFSense, but also run Home Assistant, a small NAS, a WireGuard server, taking advantage of the four cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, and SATA and N.2 connections. 
or even the Arduino coprocessor and Raspberry Pi GPIO. While I'm not going to mess around with the Arduino or GPIO stuff, I am going to take a stab at running PFSense as a virtual machine so that we can hopefully run some other services on this as well. But running a router in a VM could be a recipe for disaster. There are tons of stories, forum posts, and videos of virtual machine routers having strange issues. And while it can save space and resources, it also can be a pain to lose internet access anytime you need to work on, shut down, or reboot the host machine. We also face the issue of only having two Ethernet ports. If these are both available to the router for a WAN and LAN port, we don't have a network connection to our hypervisor or any of the other hosts running on it. Fortunately, there should be workarounds for all of these issues, and if we're able to get our router running in a VM, we can do a lot more with the system. To do all of this, I'm going to install Proxmox, which is a fairly simple to use hypervisor. Then I'm going to install two virtual machines, one running PFSense and another running Debian Linux. The latter should let us run Docker containers or services for various things like Home Assistant, WireGuard, PyHole, or really whatever else we might want. Now, quick disclaimer, I actually already went through this process, so rather than going back through everything in real time, I'm just going to go back and explain everything I did to potentially get this up and running. This won't be much of a tutorial. I'm not going to dive into the nitty gritty details of Proxmox or PFSense much, but if that's what you're looking for, get subscribed. I have a more detailed Proxmox video coming out that should be quite a bit of fun. If you're wanting more info on how to use PFSense, I actually recommend checking out this video from Lawrence Systems as that's what really helped me when I got started with PFSense. With that all out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing I did was download the latest ISO for Proxmox VE and then copy it over to my Ventoy USB drive. After plugging it in and booting up, the install was fairly easy and straightforward. After finishing the install and rebooting, Proxmox booted up and showed this screen, which gave me the address for the web UI. Navigating to that address took me to the UI, where I could see our prox node running as expected. When navigating over to the network tab, you can see that there are a few devices here. We had the two physical NICs, the Wi-Fi adapter that we'll just be ignoring, and then a Linux bridge, which is a virtual NIC that is currently using one of our two network adapters. Now we could use this virtual NIC for our PFSense machine and Debian machine later on, but that could cause some issues. Instead, I'm going to plug in a USB network adapter that we can use for Proxmox control and for the Debian VM. This way, I can pass through the two onboard NICs to the PFSense machine so that it can use them directly. Before worrying about PCIe pass-through though, I needed to get the USB NIC working. After plugging it in and refreshing, it popped up under the network devices. Then, all I had to do was edit the network bridge to use our USB NIC, edit a few labels, just for my own sake, and then apply the changes. With our two network ports freed up, I moved on to installing PFSense. After downloading the latest version from the PFSense website, I uploaded the ISO to my Proxnodes local storage. With that finished, I started creating the PFSense VM. I selected the installer ISO, and then used mostly default settings, but gave it two CPU cores and three gigabytes of RAM. Although I had to ask Google just to make sure I got my math right here. The only other thing I did was disable the default network device because we'll want PFSense to only use the two physical NICs we're going to pass through. With the VM created, it was time to add our two network ports, but in order to do this, we need IOMMU to be enabled. To do this, I first made sure that virtualization and VTD were enabled in the BIOS, which I previously did before turning on the Odyssey. Then there are a few steps to follow on the Proxmite website, which is mostly just some copy-paste into the shell of our host machine. Since I was using Grub, I followed that set of instructions and then rebooted the machine. After a quick reboot, I was able to verify that IOMMU was in fact enabled. Then in the settings of the PFSense virtual machine under the hardware tab, I added the two PCI devices for our Intel NICs. After that, it was finally time to start up the virtual machine. Once it booted up, it took me through the expected install process. And once that was finished, I could remove the virtual install media and restart our virtual machine. 
While that was booting up, I went ahead and set up a network switch, which I connected to what would be the LAN port of our router. And normally I would have connected what would be the WAN port to my modem, but for this setup, I'm just connecting it to a switch on my home network. Back in PFSense, after making sure the interfaces were assigned properly to LAN and WAN, I set up the LAN address to 192.168.100.1/24 to make sure it was in a different subnet than my local network, and then enabled DHCP. To test everything out, I plugged my desktop into the switch, and after a few seconds, it was assigned an IPv4 address of 192.168.100.100, and I had internet access. I did some more setup in the PFSense UI, but I really won't go into detail on that here, as mentioned earlier. With PFSense set up, it was time to move on to our second virtual machine. This was really simple since we don't need any PCIe pass-through or anything, so I just uploaded a Debian ISO in the same way as before, and then made a new virtual machine with four virtual CPU cores, and once again, three gigabytes of RAM. After going through the initial process, disabling all desktop environments, enabling SSH, and rebooting, I remoted into the shell and started setting things up. First, I installed Docker and added my Haven user to the Docker group. Then I installed Portainer to make running and managing containers a bit easier. With Portainer set up, I installed Home Assistant using the Linux server.io image. Just to make sure our router was working as expected, I unplugged the USB network adapter from my home network, plugged it into our PFSense's LAN switch, and then gave it a static IP in the 192.168.100.0 subnet. Just as a proof of concept that our router slash server combo operated properly, and it seemed to be working great. I wanted to add a bit more to this system like Pi-hole and WireGuard, but unfortunately, I started not feeling very well and had to step away from working on this. I'm already behind on making this video and have more stuff I want to get to here soon, like the Proxmox home server video I mentioned earlier. So for now, this is where we're going to leave things. However, I'm also planning to revisit this router and take advantage of some of the available features of the Odyssey to add more network interfaces and get rid of the awkward USB adapter. I also hope to replace my current router with this one once I do so, so stay tuned. I really enjoyed getting to mess around with Proxmox, virtualization, and PFSense in this video, and it was also really cool to take a look at the Odyssey, so huge thanks to the people over at Seed Studio for sending it over. If you're interested in one of these, or any of the other awesome boards and products they have over there, go check out their website, which I'll have linked in the video description below. I had a ton of fun making this video, and I really hope you had just as much fun watching it. If so, maybe check out some of my other videos, like this one where I installed Pi-hole on a 15-year-old Mac Mini. That's about it for this one though, so as always, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I really hope to see you in the next one.